In the previous video, we implemented the linked list data structure with a head and a tail pointer. In this video, let's use that to implement the stack data structure. Now what I've done is created a new file called linklist.js and moved the code into this file. I have also commented out the instantiation and instead exported the linked list for use in a different file. Please pause the video and make sure you're on the same page. If that is done, let's proceed. Now we know that a stack data structure follows the LIFO principle, last in, first out. In other words, we insert from one end and remove from that same end. If we consider a linked list, we can treat inserting a node at the start of the list as the push operation and removing a node from the start as the pop operation. If this is clear, let's head back to Replit and write the code. In index.js, I'm going to begin by importing the linked list class. Next, let's define the stack class. Let's call it linked list stack. Within the class, define the constructor. And this is where we instantiate the linked list we created in the previous video. This dot list is equal to new linked list. Pretty simple constructor. Now then, what are the different methods a stack should implement? Let's write down the function signatures. We have push, which accepts a value. We have pop. Peak and a few helper methods like is empty. Get size and print. Let's implement them one at a time starting with push. The push method will insert a value at the top of the stack. For our understanding, let's consider the head of the list as the top of the stack. To insert a value at the head, we can call the prepend method on the list. This dot list dot prepend we pass in value. As simple as that. Let's now move on to pop. Pop removes an element from the top of the stack. To remove an element from the head, we can use the remove from front method. So return this dot list dot remove from front parentheses. Next, we define the peak method, which returns the value present on top of the stack. In our example, that will always be the head node. So we return this dot head dot value. Let's now move on to the helper methods. First, we have is empty, where we return this dot list dot is empty. Get size will return this dot list dot get size. And finally, print will return this dot list dot print. As you can see, we are not writing any new code. We are reusing the code from the previous video, but restricting what the user can access. Let's now test this to make sure it works as expected. First, we instantiate the class. Next, let's make sure the list is empty. So call stack dot is empty. Run the code. And we see it is true. Let's push a couple of elements on top of the stack. Stack.push 20, 10, 
and 30. Let's now call get size and stack dot print. Run the code and we see 30, 10 and 20. 30 is on top of the stack, which is the head node. Size seems to be undefined. So let's fix that by adding the return keyword. So we now have three as the size and 30, 10 and 20 as the elements. Let's pop one element from the stack. And this would be 30 since that is the element on top of the stack. Finally, let's call stack.peak, which should return 10. We have an error since this should be this.list.head.value. Run the code and we see 10. So we have successfully defined the behavior of a stack data structure using a linked list. In the next video, let's define the behavior of a queue data structure using the same linked list. I'll see you in the next one.